Welcome to section 16 of Metabolism. In this section, we'll be discussing purines and pyrimidines. Let's get started. As a reminder, DNA consists of four types of nitrogenous bases, cysteine, adenine, thymine, and guanine. RNA is similar but contains uracil rather than thymine. Nitrogenous bases are subdivided into purines and pyrimidines. Adenine and guanine are purines, and cytosine and thiamine, as well as uracil, are pyrimidines. In this lecture, we'll be discussing the synthesis of purines and pyrimidines. This is the metabolic map provided in section 1 of Metabolism. In this video, we're focusing on purine and pyrimidine synthesis. These pathways can be seen right here. We'll also be discussing the purine salvage pathway. Let's zoom up on these pathways. This is a detailed figure of purine and pyrimidine metabolism, which can be found in section 15 of metabolism. Notice that this figure includes the de novo synthesis of purines, which can be seen right here, the de novo synthesis of pyrimidines, which can be seen right here, and finally the purine salvage pathway, which can be seen right here. Notice from the figure that there are many drugs listed. This video is not intended to be a pharmacology lecture, so we're not going to discuss each of them, but they are important to keep in mind. Also notice several important disorders and notes at the bottom right side of the figure, right here. We'll talk more about these later. Okay, with this in mind, let's focus on de novo purine synthesis first. Recall that ribose 5-phosphate is synthesized from the HMP shunt. From here, ribose 5-phosphate can be used to make 5-phosphoribosyl-1-pyrophosphate, or PRPP. PRPP can then be converted to 5-phosphoribosylamine, right here, by the enzyme PRPP amidotransferase. From here, inosine monophosphate is formed. You can see IMP right here. And then this can be used to synthesize adenosine monophosphate, or AMP, or guanosine monophosphate, or GMP. Eventually, these are used to produce adenine and guanine, which can be used in nucleic acids. It should be pretty intuitive that as purine levels rise, the cell downregulates their production. From the figure, you can see that PRPP amidotransferase, right here, is inhibited by AMP, IMP, and GMP. Okay, now let's discuss pyrimidine synthesis. Pyrimidine synthesis begins with glutamine and carbon dioxide combining to form carbamyl phosphate. This is converted to erotic acid, which then combines with PRPP to form uridine monophosphate, or UMP. Notice that this step requires UMP synthase, which you can see right here. Also notice that a deficiency of this enzyme is associated with erotic aciduria. Erotic aciduria results in megaloblastic anemia. This should make sense to you. If de novo pyrimidine synthesis is impaired, then thymine and cytosine are unable to be produced. This means red blood cells will have a difficult time synthesizing and replicating DNA. Normally, the progenitor red blood cell divides many times throughout hematopoiesis, and each time it divides, it gets smaller. So if this is one big progenitor red blood cell, as it divides, it gets a little bit smaller. However, if DNA cannot be synthesized properly, the red blood cell divides less in attempt to conserve the DNA. This results in large red blood cells, also known as megaloblastic anemia. So if we cross these out, showing that the red blood cell is dividing less, we can see that the red blood cell is larger. It's also important to know that erotic aciduria does not cause hyperammonemia because the urea cycle functions normally. In contrast, ornithine transcarbamylase deficiency, which is a urea cycle disorder, does cause hyperammonemia. I talk more about this disorder in the video on the urea cycle. Finally, it's important to know that the treatment for this disorder is uridine supplementation. This makes sense, right? These patients cannot synthesize UMP, so the treatment is to give them UMP in the form of uridine. So you can see that I've drawn uridine right here, if we were to give the patient uridine, it would essentially bypass this step. Okay, let's see what your text says. Orotic aciduria is due to a deficiency of UMP synthase. 
This results in megaloblastic anemia. It does not cause hyperammonemia because the urea cycle functions normally, and the treatment is uridine supplementation. Okay, let's continue discussing pyrimidine synthesis. From UMP, UDP is formed, which can then make either cytosine or thymine. Notice that the conversion of deoxyuridine monophosphate, or DUMP, to deoxythymidine monophosphate, or DTMP, is a bit unique because it requires folate. From the figure, you can see that if a patient is folate deficient, then dihydrofolate reductase is inhibited. So you can see a folate deficiency right here inhibits dihydrofolate reductase, which inhibits the synthesis of DTMP. Okay, let's do a question. A seven-year-old boy is brought to the physician by his mother, who states that he has had two months of worsening fatigue. When asked about the boy's diet, his mother states that the family is vegan. However, she is adamant that they supplement his diet with all of the vitamins he needs for proper development, including cobalamin and folate. A CBC reveals anemia with an MCV of 110. This patient's anemia is likely a result of a deficiency of what enzyme? From the question stem, hopefully you notice that this boy has a macrocytic anemia, which we can deduce based on his MCV of 110. We're also told that the family is vegan. Veganism is a risk factor for vitamin B12 deficiency, which could certainly cause a macrocytic anemia. Folate deficiency could also cause a macrocytic anemia. However, the question stem further states that his diet has been supplemented with both vitamin B12 and folate, making both of these vitamin deficiencies less likely. Therefore, we can conclude that this patient's macrocytic anemia is likely due to another cause. In this case, erotic aciduria is most likely, which is due to a deficiency of UMP synthase. From the overview figure, we can see that a deficiency of UMP synthase results in erotic aciduria. Because de novo pyrimidine synthesis is impaired, thymine and cytosine are unable to be produced. This means red blood cells will have a difficult time synthesizing and replicating DNA, which results in a macrocytic anemia. Okay, let's do another question. A 42-year-old female with a past medical history significant for multiple psychiatric hospital admissions presents with recent onset fatigue. She is accompanied by her brother who states that her eating habits have been quite eccentric. A CBC reveals anemia with an MCV of 118. Homocysteine levels are elevated, but methylmalonic acid levels are normal. What two supplements are likely to improve this patient's anemia? Notice that this woman has eccentric eating habits which has resulted in a macrocytic anemia, or an MCV of 118. We're also told that homocysteine levels are elevated, but methylmalonic acid levels are normal. Recall that methylmalonic acid levels are elevated in patients with B12 deficiency, but are normal in patients with folate deficiency. Additionally, a folate deficiency results in elevations in homocysteine. So B12 deficiency results in elevated methylmalonic acid levels, or MMA, and folate results in normal MMA levels and increased homocysteine. We can see our patient here has elevated levels of homocysteine. So with this information, we can be confident that our patient has a folate deficiency. So the question is asking what two supplements are likely to improve this patient's anemia. If you look at the overview figure, we can see that a folate deficiency results in inhibition of dihydrofolate reductase. 5,10-methylene tetrahydrofolate right here is unable to be produced, which decreases the synthesis of thymine. So it should make sense that supplementation with folate would improve her symptoms. However, we're asked what two supplements are likely to improve her anemia. Notice that a folate deficiency results in decreased thymine. So it should make sense that if we supplemented her diet with thiamine, this would essentially accomplish the same thing as supplementing her diet with folate. So in answer to the question, supplementation with thymine and folate would likely improve her anemia. Okay, now that we've discussed the de novo synthesis pathways, let's turn our attention to the purine salvage pathway. Purines can be synthesized from scratch or recycled in order to conserve energy. Notice that the purines that were synthesized on the right side of the image, so right here, IMP, AMP, and GMP, are also now shown in the purine salvage pathway. 
You can see IMP, AMP, and GMP. These are all nucleotides, as you can see right here. I'm not going to walk through every step, but notice that this pathway can use free bases, such as guanine and hypoxanthine, and convert these back into GMP, IMP, and AMP. These can then be converted back into nitrogenous bases and used to synthesize nucleic acids. Notice that the conversion of guanine and hypoxanthine back into GMP and IMP requires the enzyme hypoxanthine guanine phosphoribosyl transferase, or HGPRT, right here. Also notice that a deficiency of this enzyme results in lesch nyhan syndrome. We'll talk more about this in a second. Finally, notice that adenosine deaminase, right here, converts adenosine to inosine. Also notice that a deficiency of this enzyme results in severe combined immunodeficiency, or SCID. As adenosine metabolites accumulate in the cell, they are particularly toxic to T lymphocytes, which is why this is one of the causes of severe combined immunodeficiency. The purine salvage pathway also maps out how to eliminate purines from the body in the form of urine. Again, I'm not going to walk through every step, but notice how GMP, IMP, and AMP can eventually be converted into xanthine. This can then be converted into uric acid and then urine. Notice that the conversion of xanthine to uric acid occurs by the enzyme xanthine oxidase. This pathway is implicated in the pathogenesis of gout. Recall that gout is caused by uric acid accumulation in the joints, so it makes sense that anything that increases the metabolism of purines would increase the likelihood of developing gout. For example, meat contains a lot of purines, so patients who consume large quantities of meat can develop gout. Also notice from the figure that gout drugs such as allopurinol and febuxostat work by inhibiting xanthine oxidase. This makes sense. If xanthine oxidase is inhibited, then less uric acid is produced, which decreases the risk of developing gout. Okay, with this in mind, let's discuss Lesch-Nyhan syndrome. Lesch-Nyhan syndrome is caused by a defect in HGPRT, which you can see right here. As we just learned, HGPRT is necessary in order to recycle free bases, so a deficiency will result in funneling of purines to uric acid. In other words, these patients cannot reuse purines, so they're lost in the form of uric acid. This is why Lesch-Nyhan syndrome results in gout. This exact mechanism isn't clear, but this disorder can also cause self-mutilation and intellectual disability. Okay, let's see what your text says. Lesch-Nyhan syndrome is caused by a deficiency of HGPRT. It results in gout, self-mutilation, and intellectual disability. Okay, let's do a question. A four-year-old boy presents with a painful swollen wrist. His mother states that he has had multiple episodes similar to this. Upon further discussion, the physician discovers that the boy is severely intellectually delayed and has had multiple episodes of self-mutilation. An enzyme deficiency is suspected and confirmed with appropriate laboratory tests. How will the activity of transketolase likely be altered in this patient? From the question stem, you should notice that this boy has Lesch-Nyhan syndrome. We can deduce this based on a history of gout, so painful swollen wrists, intellectual disability, and self-mutilation. Let's look at the overview figure to help us answer this question. Recall that Lesch-Nyhan syndrome is due to a deficiency of HGPRT, right here. This means that the patient will have difficulty reusing purine bases. The boy compensates for this by upregulating the de novo synthesis purine pathway, right here. In this case, we're asked how the activity of transketolase would likely be altered. Recall that transketolase is an enzyme in the HMP shunt that is responsible for generating ribose 5-phosphate. Notice from this figure that ribose 5-phosphate is needed for the de novo purine synthesis pathway. If we look at the HMP shunt, we can see that transketolase generates ribose 5-phosphate from fructose 6-phosphate. So in this case, the activity of transketolase would likely be increased. If we go to the last image, we can see that this would provide the de novo purine synthesis pathway with more ribose 5-phosphate. This would then be used to generate more purines, which would compensate for the defective purine salvage pathway over here.